how is it going guys it's epsilon here and today we are going to find out how this monstrosity of a tier 10 medium in the leopard one can be so advantageous in the later half of the game and how you can use this thing or alternatively take this thing out so that you can get better at world of tanks hopefully this video is going to showcase what this tier 10 medium tank can do and how you can use it effectively especially in these clutch scenarios at the end of the game so this beginning stage in the game is really really crucial because it allows you to understand where the enemy team are going to be going and in a top tier medium where you're up against the kosh then it's really really important that you do do that so that you can predict what's going to happen in the game and adjust so that when you are in your glass cannon medium tank that you don't get caught out and you aren't going to get absolutely rinsed although this may be the case within this game but it may not matter anyway so what we're going to see is the use of the alpha damage of this vehicle, the spotting potential. We're going to see the camo, the concealment, and basically every aspect of the leopard that can be beneficial for you and anyone in the game and how that really impacts the game um, and basically how powerful the leopard one can be in World of Tanks. Of course, the key thing here is making sure that no matter what you do, you are being aggressive. Now, a very smart play here by the Leopard in trying to hit this Progetto because the Progetto is kind of the ultimate counter to the Leopard because what happens is the Progetto can come around the corner, it can clip you, it can significantly reduce the last hit points that you may have in the end game. So it's really, really crucial uh, that the Leopard here can remove the hit points of the Progetto, get him out of the game and then cause the danger aspect of the later half of the game to be significantly reduced. The uh, Progetto is definitely nothing to be uh, kind of trifled with in the later stages. It's probably way more dominant than the Leopard 1 could ever be in the back end of the game. Um, so removing that is definitely one of the key priorities within this game. But you'll notice that in this game, talking about it, uh, we have been seeing the Leopard hitting for 481, for example, in that shot there on the Progetto. And this is a pretty usual case in the Leopard 1 now because back when I started playing World of Tanks, the Leopard 1 only had 400 alpha. That was changed and it's now got 420, which has made this vehicle feel a lot more capable of dealing with some of the other tanks that you may meet, some of the lower tier vehicles that maybe get Hesh, and since you have virtually no armor in this thing you're going to be relying on that main armament to kind of keep you in the fight and to be able to counter a lot of the people that you'll be facing along with the spotting potential and you've kind of seen that within this game 2600 damage has been dealt within this replay so far and 2700 of it has also been assisted within this game so what i guess the key thing that you can do with the leopard is it's the all-round medium tank because it's not bad in any one thing bar maybe armor but other than that it's got pretty much everything that you could possibly want whilst the game has been going well for the leopard it's not been going very well for his team and with the majority of the enemy team facing off against just a wz11114 and of course a conqueror that subsequently died it's not looking good for the northern side of the map and it's probably not looking all too good for the southern side either with them basically being encapsulated by the Emil 2, the Ag Tiger, the 140, the Fosh B, all in that region, all with different angles and that is not proving to be very good for his team and you can see that by the 3,000 hit points missing uh, between the two teams with of course the enemy team leading in the battle for the hit points. So. Although the game has come out as a pretty good success so far, having picked up 5,600 combined damage, it could all change suddenly. And that's where the Leopard is uh, kind of... Uh, it can be a little bit annoying to play because you can see he's lost every single hit point that pretty much could have been lost within this game by every single tank that has hit him. And although he's been very, very accurate, been able to... Uh, pound out rounds rounds after round after round into his opponents and use the DPM of the Leopard It's not really helped out his team at this point in the battle And it's this point that you need to start doing some damage and really pushing out damage against the opponents that matter now Unfortunately 
the Leopard 1 on the enemy team gets taken out before he was able to even deal a shot of damage with the Fosh B helping him out and of course his other teammate uh, also trying to help out but he wasn't able to successfully do all too much at this point. So from this position it's a great defensive position on World of Tanks because not only are you kind of using the camouflage mechanics that you can do with the Leopard and with the great view range and also concealment that this tank can get compared to some other tanks in the game then you are going to be providing some vision for the Fosh and of course with this Fosh being an autoloader and being able to pump out round after round you can only expect this spotting damage number to go up if anything does actually get spotted in the region down here. Now the only kind of problem that comes with this position is if the opponents decide to kind of poke on this ridge here whereby you can't get an easy shell into them and they can be a bit of a pain and actually end up spotting you if you're not entirely careful from this ridge up here so it's always best if you are approaching from this side and you know that there isn't anyone going to be sat down here or in this bush here or in this area here then approaching from this side can be a beneficial position but we're not entirely sure within this game since they haven't been spotted so I thought I'd just mention that um, for anyone trying to counter this position and talking about countering how can you counter the leopard well the key thing about the vehicle, as we've already mentioned, and it's kind of key weakness, is of course that actual armor model and the fact that it basically doesn't get any armor at all. And so you're going to be ending up in a fairly annoying position when it comes to people deciding to load some HE rounds, which, trust me, when playing the Leopard 1, they do. And with the Leopard being a fairly kind of it hasn't got the highest alpha, but it's definitely not the worst. It still can't trade with people firing HE, and that's the real problem that it may face over some other mediums, is that other mediums will be able to bounce the HE, or at least not take the full damage, whereas the Leopard one can't. So you've got to make use of your DPM advantage over those mediums, like, for example, some of the Soviet tanks with the higher uh, kind of uh, penetra armor values. And so, yeah, you can use your penetration, your gun handling and all of the benefits of that to be able to get some rounds in. So that's kind of how the Leopard 1 has its advantages, but it's not necessarily all that the Leopard 1 has. And we're going to see some extras that this tank can do within this replay. Now, I understand that we've been talking a lot about how the tank performs without actually seeing a great deal at this point in the battle. But that's all about to change because this battle becomes a real struggle for the Leopard and it tests it to its absolute maximum. There is no chance for any mistakes whatsoever within this replay. Having only been on 97 hit points, yeah, there is nothing you can do wrong uh, in this game if you do decide you want to win this game. But the one thing that the VZ does wrong is get spotted out in the open and with the lower plate exposed as he's cresting that ridge line, yeah, a very easy shell for the Leopard to actually pinpoint and place a nice round all into it. Now, what would you say is a great medium tank other than the Leopard 1? Well, of course, we talked about the Progetto at the beginning of the game as well. Um, you've got things like the Object 430U, which are a completely different medium tank and a different playstyle, whereby they rely upon the armor model, and it's more about being able to be super aggressive in those vehicles, whereas this tank is something uh, a little bit different and relies upon you being able to kind of um, get the damage out quickly and then leave or alternatively get damage whilst being um, somewhat uh, kind of undetectable and just being a nuisance. So you can see here the Emil 2 does finish off his teammate in the Fosh um, and unfortunately that is the case but he does manage at this point to be able to remain undetected and he shuts down the 50 TP which is crazy from that position and remains undetected once again and from this point it was of course a 1 versus 5 but with these 50 TP now down uh, it's uh, basically a 1 versus 4 and um, the enemy team have 4,121 hit points remaining that they have to deal with to be able to win this game. And of course the enemies only have to deal 97. But will they be able to do it against this vehicle? Will they be able to actually spot and will they be able to actually execute the vehicle before he actually removes the hit points remaining on their vehicles well we're going to see that and of course that's what you're here for there's no reason of watching this video if you don't want to see how this actually all ends so 
I was so amazed that this was even possible. I never thought a vehicle without having to actually trade any kind of hit points at the end of the game would be able to carry in such a position and I'm guessing that it's down to the fact that the Leopard is pretty dominant here in these sorts of scenarios because it's fast, it has everything you need and of course when you have good accuracy like we're seeing here on this player then there's nothing really that the opponents can do unless they come all at once and then there really is nothing that this vehicle can do. So with the STRV 103B getting tracked and he's uh, attempting to retrack him here, can't do another one of those rams otherwise you will take yourself out of the game. I hope he doesn't actually decide to do that. He realises that right at the end. I think he was going for it but luckily decides against it and leaving himself on just five hit points within this replay is utterly bonkers and it's going to mean that there are two vehicles left on the enemy team one on an unknown amount and the other on an unknown amount but with 1511 hit points remaining on both vehicles so it's a very clenchy butthole time at this point in the battle and with the tnh on the enemy team progressing and he quickly shut down it's now just a one versus one in the, against the yag tiger with five tanks out of a one versus six scenario taken down so yag tiger left on 1135 hit points at the time he was last spotted so he could have taken a round but it's now a case of seeing which player is going to make the mistake first who is going to go where what's going to happen can he secure a Kolobanov's medal can he secure the victory and can he have one of the best games that the leopard has probably seen in world of tanks well we're about to find out and I'm really hoping he can. So with the aggressive style of this Leopard and knowing that, you know, he might as well give it his all against the Yag Tiger that's probably still sat in base, it's time to grab the bull by the horns, see who's the king and of course progress towards the Yag Tiger. So we all know Yag Tiger may have been spotted at the beginning of the game and we have no idea if he actually is. Now luckily for the luck of the game the Yag Tiger is actually AFK and sat out in the open he decides to go for the secure kill on the Yag Tiger by retracking him in position with the Yag Tiger not being able to do anything even if he does return and he shuts down the game on a one versus six scenario that is genuinely one of the best leopard replays I think I've ever seen in the game and potentially uh, one of the best replays I've seen altogether so Hopefully that's given you a good indication as to how powerful the Leopard can be, even in scenarios where maybe you just wouldn't have thought that this tank would be able to come out on top, and especially with such little hit points, I just genuinely never thought it would be possible. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, if you want to follow me and see any more replays like this and analysis, if you, if you enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy it, make sure to leave your feedback in the comments, and of course, like or dislike the video if you don't. So thank you and I will hope to see you in the next replay. Goodbye.